Hello, my name is Chef Marcus Bjork. Today, we're gonna to talk about pan searing. What we're gonna work with today is canola oil, sesame oil, olive oil, and butter. All of these have a different burning point. What that means is when your pan gets to a different temperature, you're gonna see them start to burn. You know when you put butter into a hot pan, it gives this big, big sizzle, and then it browns. Well, of course, when it browns, it's gonna give a different flavor. It's a flavor that you might wanna you know, with some of the things like, um, you know, an almondine, something with a brown butter sauce, you know, over trout or something like that, then you are gonna want that brown butter, but that can go from a brown butter to a black butter, which is gonna give it a bitter, awful taste. Uh, your olive oil is gonna be, and your sesame oil are gonna be the two necks that have a very low smoking point. Uh, your canola oil has a much higher smoking point, is what they call that. We're gonna go to the burner now, and I'll show you a couple of the tricks that I've learned through the years on how to, one, get that pan up to temperature and know it's at the correct temperature and also make sure that you know how to work with these fats properly that they're not going to burn if they do start to get to that smoking point quickly of how to bring that temperature down by quickly putting in your food. Like we talked about before, I'm going to show you what it means by the smoking point. So I'm going to add to this pan butter. And you could already see here how it's starting to smoke that quick, which means it has a very low smoking point. You can see how it's starting to brown. So you know if you are going to use a butter that you're going to have to work with it pretty quick. What I usually do with butter is I put the butter in the cold pan and bring it up to temperature. So you can see there how it's already browned, it's smoking, and it's basically, if you're doing a brown butter sauce, like I said, this would be fine. This is probably when you'd add the almonds, toast the almonds a little bit, and you'd have a brown butter sauce. So with this, though, basically you can see how quick now it's about black. You can see it's smoking, and we're pretty much done. That would, If you have that happen, you need to take this pan, discard it, wipe it out, clean it, and start over again. Don't try to do a sauce, but you can see now how it's starting to smoke. Next, what we have is a pure sesame oil, which has a low smoking point as well. We put this in the pan, in a hot pan, and you can see it. It smokes pretty quick. And this will also burn pretty quickly. So what you want to do when you put that and you're starting to see it smoke, this is when you quickly lay your meat on it because that meat, if it's coming out of the refrigerator, it's going to cool down that pan to pretty much the temperature you want unless you have the pan you forgot on the stove for three or four minutes on that high heat. So if that ever happens, take your pan off the heat, let it sit for a little bit, and then start over again and come back up to heat. I'll show you here of a good way to make sure that your pan is up to temperature. What you could do is the water test. Water test, you could put your oil. As you can see, all that water is going to separate, come together, and then quickly, uh, quickly evaporate from the pan. But you can tell here that that is a pretty good temperature right here. And see how it basically goes across the pan like mercury would? Then you could tell that that is pan is ready. Right here I have a pan that I'm bringing up to heat. I'll show you how you, when you know the pan is not ready. You keep on, obviously the pan is not ready. Water's not doing anything. You can see it slowly start to boil away. Now it's starting to evaporate very quickly, but the water's not bouncing onto the top of the pan. You can see how the water is kind of separating, but now it's slowly starting to come together. But it's still a bunch of beads that are separated. So what you want is you want all that water to kind of come together. As you can see now, how you can see that water dancing on top, you know your pan is ready. So what you do now, is you wipe out the water with your pan. What we're going to use is a canola oil. We're going to season our chicken. And a good way you could also test is just put a little pit in the pan. As you can see there, the meat is ready. 
you're going to know doing this more and more that basically you can almost go by sound when something's ready to be seared. This is a perfect sound when you're searing something. Now as you can see in the pan, I'm spacing this. I don't want to put six or seven pieces of chicken in here. What it would do is drop my temperature too much in my pan and like I said before, you'd be steaming and not searing. Now one of the big things that I always see people doing, one big thing I always see people doing is they want to move their stuff. They constantly are messing and messing and messing. You need to get out of that habit. Let, put your food in the pan and let it sit, especially when you're pan searing. Now the importance of pan searing is what I want to do is I want some of what they call the fond to stick to that pan because that's going to help me make a pan sauce later. So what I want to do is just slowly pick it up. Now if I go to pick it up and it starts to stick a little bit, just let it go back down and let it sit. It will come off that pan. But as you can see, that came off so easy, like it was a non-stick pan. So let the other side sit. What I like to do is season your meat, of course, salt and pepper it before you put it in the pan. The one product that I always find that I really want to make sure that my pan is at the right temperature is with fish. Fish sticks a lot more than it seems than chicken or meat. But if you have the correct temperature in your pan, that fish will slide away like you're in a non-stick pan. A lot of people get very, very scared when you use a non-stick pan for seafood. But if you're doing scallops or any kind of fish, you're not going to get that good crust on your seafood. Um, the way you would with a non-stick. So this is now finished. What I would do is transfer this to another pan and then make my pan sauce, put this in the oven, and then what I would do is drain my oil. And then from this I can make a sauce, which if you go to our segment on sauces, I'll show you how to do that. So what I see a lot of people doing is they'll take their pan, put it on the stove, add their oil or fat, whatever they want to cook in, then they'll take their meat, put it right in. As you can see, there's no sear, there's no bubble, there's, there's nothing. So you can see that this pan is not ready. What it's doing right now, it's opening up and closing, opening up and closing. And as you'll see here, what I'm doing is I'm steaming. All that liquid's now escaping and it's starting to steam my meat before I can sear it. And so here, you're going to see you don't have a good sear on your meat. You're not getting any of the fawn um, or the reduction here on the pan to make a good sauce at the end. So what we've learned today is properly searing. What you want to make sure is that you have your pan at the right temperature. Make sure you're using the right fat for what you're doing so you're not using a fat that is going to burn quicker than you can get a good sear on your product in the pan.